The story starts with people outside, dressed in different costumes, dancing, and chanting Happy Independence Day. Inside the house, Elena is shown dressing up and trying to put on her necklace. Her sister Kynin comes in and asks her if she's planning on sleeping with the right honorable minister in exchange for their dad's contract. Just then, their mom comes in and tells them to hurry up, because the minister is around. At the dining table, the minister asks Elena if she will be coming to work at the ministry because they need first-class brains like hers. She refuses, saying she will be leaving Lagos for Sukkah, because she got a job in the Department of Sociology. The minister goes ahead to invite the entire family to a meal at his place by the weekend, but Elena still refuses, saying she made plans to visit Kano to see her uncle Mbizi and his family. The minister turns and asks Kainin if she will be available, but she says she won't because she will be busy putting her new degree to good use by managing her dad's businesses in Port Harcourt. The minister informs Chief Ozobia, their dad, that he has won by having twin daughters, and whoever tells him he lost is a liar. They all click their glasses and say Happy Independence Day. Alana and Kainin excuse themselves from the table. Their mom tries to stop them but they point out it's Independence Day and they have lots of places to be. At a party, Kainin sees Richard Churchill, and he follows her, trying to get her attention. A woman walks in on them and Richard clarifies he has a mutual friend with Kainin in London. She leaves, telling them to catch up with each other as she will be back soon. Kainin asks Richard why he just lied to his wife, but he corrects her. She isn't his wife. Kainin asks him to move back because there's a photographer who wants to take a picture of the necklace her dad bought for her. The camera clicks, and Kainin blinks due to the intense light. She voices to Richard the necklace will be featured in tomorrow's Lagos life, as it will be her way of helping her newly independent country, giving people what to aspire for. Kynene mentions that she can see her sister looking for her and needs to go meet her, but Richard pleads with her to stay back. Just then, the other woman comes back to get Richard and Kynene walks over to meet Alana, her sister. Alana asks her if she's interested in Richard and when Kynene confirms it, Alana plays a prank on Kynene by calling out the name of one of her exes. They both giggle and Alana tells her she doesn't know what Kynene sees in these English boys. In another scene, Richard is shown looking at the photos of Kynene from the newspaper and goes to phone her. Outside, at a party, Kynene and Richard dance to the best of the local music playing. Kainin asks Richard if he has come to Nigeria because he's running away from something, but he says he just wants to see Africa. He reveals that he has accepted a job offer in Nsukka in the Department of English, so Kainin lets him know her sister is there and tells him that he can also visit her in Port Harcourt. Alana arrives in Kano and sees her uncle Mbizi outside, and with excitement, he welcomes her, asking about her parents and her sister. Inside the house, Alana gives her aunt the gift she bought and her aunt blesses her. Just then, her cousin comes out and they both hug each other. Her cousin asks if she's going to suck at a Mario to Nigbo, but Alana lets on how she isn't sure about marriage, as she just wants to be closer to him. At Odenigbo's house, he talks to his housekeeper, Ugwu, about the coming of a special person and that the house needs to be very clean. He tells Ugwu to order food from outside because Alana loves her fried rice a certain way but Ugwu insists on making the rice himself, saying with much confidence that he can cook. Odenigbo asks Ugwu if he went to school but Ugwu reveals he stopped at class too many years ago, due to his father's crop failure. This makes Odenigbo curious and he asks Ugwu why his father couldn't borrow money to send him to school. Ugwu's mood changes to a sad one but the sadness is cut short when Odenigbo promises to send him back to school again. Ugwu dishes out the rice and serves it to Alana. She calmly deduces the rice is tasteless and she's going to teach him how to cook rice. In the bedroom, Alana and Odenigbo are having a moment when Odenigbo's friends come knocking on the door and asking for his presence. Odenigbo goes out and introduces Alana to them. She greets them all, introducing herself to Lara and Okoma. There's a knock at the kitchen door, and Ugwu rushes to open it to see Mama, Odenigbo's mom, with Amala, Mama's housekeeper. Ugwu welcomes Mama in and tells her Odenigbo would be back in the evening, and she should rest while she waits for him. Mama refuses and brings out fresh vegetables from her bag, saying she wants to prepare good soup for her son. Mama insists to Ugwu that he does well, but a boy doesn't belong in the kitchen. She turns to Amala to ask for confirmation and Amala agrees to Mama's statement. Just when Mame asks Amala to make the kakoyam for the soup, Alana comes in and hugs Mama, welcoming her home. Alana beacons Mama to follow her outside and let Ugwu handle the cooking because she needs to rest, but Mama instantly refuses, saying she wants to cook for her son. Alana agrees to it and decides to go change and help her in the kitchen. But Mama calls Alana a witch and voices that she leaves her son's house. Mama's words break her into pieces and she relays to Ugwu to let Odenigbo know she has gone to her flat. At Alana's flat, Odenigbo comes in, apologizes to her for his mother's behavior, and deduces that she should just ignore her. Odenigbo tries to change the topic, but Alana gets upset. Odenigbo pleads that Alana be calm because his mom is just a village woman who has lived in a bow all her life, and would surely get intimidated by seeing an intelligent and well-exposed girl like Alana. Alana gets angry at Odenigbo for accepting his mother's bad behavior, 
and trying to use the fact that she is a village woman as an excuse. She tells him to go play table tennis and never come back to meet her. At Port Harcourt, Kynene's phone rings and she answers to hear her sister's voice. She asks Alana how she is and how everyone else is doing. Alana tries to fake it, but Kynene pushes her to spill out the issue. Back at Alana's flat, Odenigbo comes knocking on her door, drunk, announcing that she dress up so they can go talk to his mom. Alana disagrees, hugging him, remarking him that he reeks of alcohol and should come inside. While kissing and caressing Alana in their bedroom, Odenigbo voices that they should have a child together and name her Obianuju. In the next scene, Odenigbo calls out to Alana to come join him in listening to the radio because there is a coup going on. With fear, Alana rushes to reach out to her parents in Lagos but the call isn't going through. Odenigbo reasons that she be calm and that her parents and civilians are perfectly fine. The network will be back after the government has been taken control of. In the next scene, Alana, Odenigbo, and his friends are sitting, having a drink, and discussing the coup the BBC News has tagged as an Igbo coup. According to them, it looks like the Igbos are beginning to run the country, and the northerners are becoming suspicious of it. The next scene shows Ogu getting into the kitchen to help Mama. She tells him to go and rest but he refuses saying he wants to help out. Mama asks him if he knows how to cook Ofensala properly because her son likes it. But Ogu explains he can't because his madam, Alana, doesn't like it. Mama gets angry and tells him Alana isn't his madam but just a woman living in the same house with a man who hasn't paid her bride price. Odenigbo calls Ogu to get him wine, and on getting into the kitchen, Mama gives him the palm wine she brought. Odenigbo drinks it while discussing with Okoma about Lara. The next scene shows Odenigbo having with Amala, Mama's housekeeper. Agu sees them but chooses to be quiet about it. Odenigbo speaks to Alana on the phone and coos about him can't waiting to see her on Tuesday. He also tells her that his mother is at his house again. Alana replies that she misses him too. She then asks if Mama will leave before she gets back on Tuesday. Alana lets her sister know that she won't wait till Tuesday anymore, as she needs to leave immediately for Ensaka. In Odenigbo's house, Alana arrives and hugs Mama who is preparing to leave with Amala. She turns to Amala in surprise and asks her how she's doing, saying she didn't know Amala was around as well. Odenigbo rushes them to enter the car, saying he has a game to play later that day. Agu asks Alana if she's hungry and would like to eat, but Alana refuses saying she has no appetite. Odenigbo gets back later and Alana asks him if anything happened, but he tries to use his student who missed a test and is trying to bribe him as an excuse. Just then, with rage, Alana reveals that she knows he touched Amala. She walks away from him and he follows her to her flat saying it was a mistake and that Amala was forcing herself on him. Alana bellows at him to get out of her house. In Kano, Alana is with her aunt, and she tells her aunt she is going to cancel her program in Ensuka but her aunt refuses, inferring that she go back to Ensuka. Her aunt advises her she shouldn't tie her life around a man. At the airport, a stranger approaches Alana and badmouths the Igbos for creating shops everywhere in the country and trying to take over industries. She gets angry at him, informs him she's also an Igbo, and leaves the place. Alana comes to pack her things from Odenigbo's house, and Ugwu tries to beg her to forgive his master because it was the doing of his mum who sent the heavy palm wine for him to drink. Alana refuses and insists that he put her stuff in the car immediately. Just then, Odenigbo comes knocking and updates Alana on Amala's pregnancy. This changes Alana's mood and she becomes emotional. Odenigbo tells her that Mama promises to take care of the baby after Amala gives birth. Odenigbo tries to defend himself, saying that it was his mum's plan from the beginning. But Alana scolds him, telling him to stop giving lame excuses. At a wine shop, Alana sees Richard and invites him to her flat. Things get heated between them and they become intimate. Alana admits to Odenigbo that she slept with Richard, so Odenigbo gets angry and drives to meet Richard in his apartment. He shouts at Richard to stay away from his house and family. In the next scene, Mama comes knocking on the door with the baby. She gives the baby to Agu and leaves immediately telling him to let his master know that Amala does not want to touch the child. Alana walks in and sees a baby in the living room with Odenigbo sitting there as well. Odenigbo lets on that Mama refuses to keep the child but he has spoken to Amala's people in a bed, and the baby will stay with them. Alana reasons him, saying that Mama does not want the child because she isn't a boy, and tells Odenigbo that they will raise the baby themselves. Odenigbo tries to suggest that she rethink her decision but Alana remains adamant on raising the baby. Alana tells her sister, Kynene, about her decision to adopt the baby, and that she wants to do so because she feels a deep connection between her and the child. Kynene commends her decision and reassures her that she is doing a brave thing. Just then, Harrison, Richard's housekeeper, comes in and serves Kynene a drink, and she tells him it tastes really good. Harrison thanks her and says he makes it for Odenigbo too, but he is going to stop because of the manner Odenigbo shouted at his master. Harrison realizes he is spilling things he should not spill. Kynene becomes suspicious and Alana leaves their house. Kynene gets angry at Richard for sleeping with her sister and he apologizes to her. 
At the airport, Richard prepares to leave for London and sees a security guard who introduces himself to Richard as Ennemeka, an Igbo boy. Richard shares with him that his fiancé, Kainin, is also Igbo. Just then, soldiers come into the airport, shouting and demanding to see the passports of everyone there. A soldier approaches Ennemeka and asks him for his passport, but Ennemeka says he left it at home. The soldier checks his name tag confirming he's Igbo and smiles at him, chiming that he stand and wait for him. Just as Ennemeka stands there, the soldier brings out his gun and shoots him. This frightens everyone there as they start running away for their safety, and the soldiers go berserk, slaying people at random. On the streets, people run for their lives with cars and shops burning. Alana sees a murderer dragging her aunt to end her and tries to stop him, but her driver rushes and interferes, saying it's too dangerous and they need to leave. The murderers begin to chase Alana and as the driver successfully pulls her back into the car, she cries and apologizes to her auntie for not being able to help her. At their home, Odenigbo shouts at Lara, flaring that no one would murder her for being Yoruba, but her people are eliminating others just for being Igbos. Lara asks Odenigbo if he's insulting her and he retorts that the truth is always like an insult. Alana comes and tells him to apologize to Lara immediately. Richard reads Kainin's letter and decides to call her. She chimes about missing him and asks how his cousin's wedding went. Richard tells her he's flying home the next day and she urges him to hurry. In the next scene, the Igbo people are cheering and raising the Biafran flag high, expressing their joy and happiness for officially becoming the Republic of Biafra. Richard arrives and Kainin expresses that she has a bad feeling war is coming soon. Just then, Alana overhears an explosion and Odenigbo urges that they might need to evacuate right now because the federal government is getting closer to Ansaka. Odenigbo hastily asks Ugwu to lock everywhere up, while Alana sits the baby on the chair so she can pack the important things they will need, including the food she is cooking. They rush to pack things into their car and leave for a bath. In a bath, Alana is shown sitting outside and sewing when Odenigbo arrives. She asks him why he's back so early, but he says it's because there's going to be a meeting at the village square so she should join him. Alana refuses, saying she's not from a bath and can't attend their meetings, but Odenigbo infers that she can if she gets married to him. He remarks that they are at war and if anything happens to him, his mother will be the one to decide what will happen to his body. He doesn't want her to, though, he wants Alana to call the shots as his wife. Alana asserts that nothing will happen to him and he answers that he knows, but he just really wants her to marry him. Alana agrees to his proposal and professes he would need to take wine to her father. In the next scene, Alana's mom arrives at Odenigbo's house and Alana expresses that she thought her mom was going to miss the wedding. Alanis cautions the country isn't safe anymore and she and the twins' father have plans of taking all four of them to Cameroon immediately. From there, they'll get a flight to London. Alana refuses, saying her parents can go if that will make them feel safe, but as for her, she will stay with Odenigbo and the baby. With a surprised look, Alana's mother asks Alana about the wedding she's speaking about. While Alana is sitting outside and awaiting Odenigbo's return, Mama comes to meet her and pleads with Alana to marry her son, Odenigbo. Alana cries to Odenigbo and asks him what has changed about her that his mother is just seeing. Odenigbo hugs her tightly. In the next scene, Odenigbo and Alana are about to leave a bath. Odenigbo tells his mom to join them but she refuses, saying she's not going to run away and leave her house for other people to take. She says that they should keep running but as for her, she'll remain in her husband's house. Odenigbo begs his mom but she insists on staying. Alana is dressing up and preparing for her wedding. She asks Ugwu to take care of the baby, saying she doesn't want her to stain her dress from playing outside. She informs Ugu she has sent an invite to Kainin in Port Harcourt, although she knows Kainin will not come for the wedding. Okoma knocks on the door and asks Alana to come out because everyone is waiting for her. He gives her the wedding flowers but she refuses it saying it's not fresh flowers, so she prefers to go without flowers. People celebrate and dance with Alana and Odenigbo on their wedding day. But just as they are about to cut their wedding cake, an explosion happens. Everyone runs out of the venue to the street and Okoma perishes in one of the street explosions. In the next scene, Ugu and Alana are shown gathering kids in the bush and teaching them the letters of the alphabet. Odenigbo leaves for a bay and hopes to find his mother's body and bury her. With tears in Alana's eyes, she tries to stop him, saying someone else must have buried her. Alana updates Ugu that the landlord doesn't want them in the house again because they can't pay their rent. Ugu lights the kerosene stove and prepares to make the baby's food. But Alana gets angry at him. She quarrels that he should go use the firewood and should learn to save expensive things for important times in the ongoing war. Ugu apologizes and Alana tells him that Odenigbo's mother was shot in a bath. Odenigbo comes back and appraises that the Biafran soldiers did not let him pass the roadblock. He and Alana both cry and she hugs him, trying to calm him down. Odenigbo and his family move to a new house and Odenigbo promises them they will get a better one still, soon. 
A woman comes knocking and introduces herself to Alana as her neighbor. She asks for Odenigbo and tells Alana that she hears he's a doctor, as she needs Odenigbo's help because three of her kids are asthmatic. Alana clarifies the misunderstanding by stating her husband has a doctorate as a professor in teaching and is not a medical doctor. The woman tells Alana that there's a lady in a car outside, looking for her too. Alana runs out and sees it's Kainin. She hugs her and brings her inside, offering her a place to sit. Kainin gives her sister the letter their mom sent to them through a British journalist, and also gives her the clothes she bought for the baby. Alana gets excited by her sister's kind behavior, and Kainin suggests it's time for the baby to be called Chayamaka now that she's grown. Alana asks her sister if she will drink some water because it's all they have, and at first, Kainin refuses, but then, she changes her mind and agrees to it. Alana escorts Kainin back to the car and tells her she'll be coming on Wednesday to see her again. Alana goes to visit Kainin with the baby and they all go for a stroll while discussing their husbands. Agwu, on his way back home, is kidnapped by some vandals into their vehicle. Kainin comes to inform Alana about Agwu's passing and Alana rushes out to tell Odenigbo about it. She hits Odenigbo several times while crying, telling him to keep drinking. While in their house, explosions occur and they all rush into their car to leave, but the car fails to start, causing delay. Odenigbo comes out and asks his wife to leave with their child, as he will meet up with them, but Alana refuses and says if they're walking then they'll all walk together. The car finally starts and they drive out at speed, dodging the explosions. At Richard and Kynene's, Odenigbo tells them that they will be here till they can find a place of their own to stay in again. Outside of the house, Kynene announces to everyone that she has some coins with her and will be leaving for Ninth Mile to see what she can trade with the women there. Odenigbo tells her it's really dangerous, but she still insists on going the next day. Outside their house, the baby runs to meet Richard when she sees him and asks him to carry her. Richard carries her, calling her a big girl. Alana tattles Richard that since the war, baby has grown wiser, but not in height. Richard asks Alana if Kynene is at the camp, but Alana notifies him that Kynene is still not back from Ninth Mile. Odenigbo comes back and asks after Kynene as well, but there's no positive response to offer. Alana and Richard go in search of Kynene and show people on the road a photo of her to aid their search. Richard breaks into tears in the car and Alana assures him that Kynene will be back soon, so he shouldn't worry. She makes Richard stop the car so she can drive instead since he isn't in the right state of mind. The telephone rings and Richard goes to pick it up. He gets the news and shares it with Alana and Odenigbo that Ugwu is still alive. Ugwu comes out of the car. Baby rushes to hug him. Alana is sitting outside with Ugwu and Baby when Richard and Odenigbo walk in. She jumps and asks them if they have found her sister, but the reply is negative. Just then, people around scream and jubilate that the war is finally over. Odenigbo quickly turns on the radio and hears that the Republic of Biafra has ceased to exist, aimed to bring peace and make Nigerians one. Richard packs a bag and tells Alana and Odenigbo that he has gone to search for Kainine. He drives the car around and asks the people if they have seen her, but it's to no avail. Inside their car heading back to Ensuka, Baby asks Alana if her aunt Kainine will come to visit them in Ensuka and Alana tells her yes. Unfortunately, till today, Kainine is still missing. 